Okay, so welcome back. Help me, Professor J. Um, we're back at the derivative, and this time we're doing the quotient rule. This is quotient rule two. I'm only saying quotient rule two because these are a bit more complicated um, examples than in the last video. These will include the chain rule as well. So let me just refresh your memory, unless you guys just saw that last video. But when you have a quotient and you want to find the first derivative, we use the quotient rule which says take the bottom, multiply by the derivative of the top, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. Okay, that's my quotient rule. So every time I do that, pro every time I do that um, derivative, I'm going to say that out loud again. Okay, so here's my example. Let's call f of x the function 3x over 2x minus 1, how about to the third? Okay? So obviously it's another quotient, and hopefully you guys looked at my video dealing with the chain rule, because I'm going to have to use a chain rule to derive that denominator when it comes time to derive the denominator. So I have a chain rule within the quotient rule when I find the first derivative. So my first derivative is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top <laughs> times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared so let's follow that it's the bottom copy it down times the derivative of the top which is just a 3 minus the top times the derivative of the bottom which is a chain rule so I'm going to do a bracket to focus on that I'm going to derive the denominator and the chain rule says bring that 3 to the front Keep the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just 2. So let me say this again. I have the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is a chain rule. Bring that 3 to the front, keep that 2x minus 1, subtract 1 from the exponent, and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Don't forget all over the denominator, which is 2x minus 1 to the third squared. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay? Nice chain rule in there. I love these kind of problems because, you know, the more complicated, the more fun. And if you guys can do these, you can do the easier ones. So don't, you know, shy away from the hard ones. Take them as a challenge, do them, have fun with it, and then the, the, the easier ones are just nothing after that. Okay, so let's simplify. I'm not going to go ahead and cube this and, and deal with that. Um, hopefully you guys, uh, to deal with this, hopefully you guys saw my video that had um, factoring out GCFs, the more complicated version of that. And even when I did the product rule, the more complicated products rule, product rules, I think, I, I think it was the product rule video 3, where I did a GCF to simplify a situation like this. So let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do right now is just one little tiny thing. I'm going to multiply this 3 and this 2, okay, and this 3x, because I could do that. This is all multiplication. So I'm not going to touch this here. I'm just going to maybe put the 3 in the front with the 2x minus 1 to the third, okay? And over here, I'm going to multiply this 3, this 3, and this 2, because a product that can multiply in any order. So 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, with that x, and then this 2x minus 1 squared. So let's double check that. 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, times this x, with this 2x minus 1 squared left all over 2x minus 1 to the third to the second. Power to power, multiply the exponents to the sixth. Now I could pull out a GCF. So if you look at this, I have a 3 here and, a, and an 18x here. So they both have a 3 in common. And then if this is a single term and this is a single kind of term, then they both have a 2x minus 1 in common. How many of them two of them, right? We always take the smallest exponent when we factor out the GCF. So this is my GCF, and what's left? 
from that first term, took out the three, I'm, I only took two of these out, so I have one more left, minus from this term. I took the three from the 18, so I have a six with that x, and I took two of these out. I only had two to start with, so that's all that's left there. Do not forget all over 2x minus 1 to the 6. Okay, almost done. I have this 3, this 2x minus 1 squared, and then now in here, this 2x minus this 6x, they're like terms. I get a negative 4x minus 1 all over 2x minus 1 to the 6. Now, I don't know if you guys recognize, I have a product on top. And I have 2x minus 1 on top and 2x minus 1 on the bottom. This is why in the quotient rule you always leave the bottom in factored form because something might simplify. And if you notice, I could cancel two of these 2x minus 1s. So these are gone. Two of these are gone, so I'm left with 4. And on the top now all I have is this 3 and this minus 4x minus 1 over this 2x minus 1 to the fourth now. Am I done? Yes and no. Yes, it's technically completely simplified. No, because I could, depending on what I prefer, take a negative out of here just to clean it up a little bit more, bring it to the front of the 3, and now that's a positive 4x and a positive 1 over this 2x minus 1 to the 4th, and it just looks a little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner. Now, that's my final case. So again, like I said, take these as, you know, a good time. This is a fun kind of situation. It's not as bad as it looks ever initially. You just have to practice it enough. Okay, so this is just one example with one chain rule. So I'm going to do one more. One more example, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two chain rules. So here's example number two. Okay, and let's call this h of x. And let's say it's 3x minus 1 to the third, maybe divided by 5x plus 2. How about to the second? Boom. Like that. All right. I have a quotient, obviously. I want to find the first derivative. Notice that this will not simplify right now. And I really don't have a lot of a choice because if I want the first derivative, I have to do a quotient rule and I have to go ahead and do two chain rules. Because when I derive the top, it's a chain rule. And when I derive the bottom, it's a chain rule. So let's do it. Say it slowly. It's the bottom. Copy it down. Times the derivative of the top. And because it's a chain rule, I'll use a bracket. Now just focus on deriving the top. It's a chain rule, we'll bring the three to the front. Keep the base. Subtract one from the exponent. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. Bottom times the derivative of the top. Minus the top. Copy it down. Times the derivative of the bottom, which is another chain rule. Bring that 2 to the front. Keep the base. Subtract 1 from the exponent. And multiply by the derivative of the inside. <laughs> Bottom times the derivative of the top. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. All over the bottom squared. Now I'm going to square that. <laughs> All right, so clean up here. Again, is my little GCF trick. But what I'll do is I'm going to show um, an extra step for you guys because um, just in case it's a little bit harder. This 3 times 3, I'm going to multiply that. And then this 2 and this 5, I'm going to multiply that so you can see the GCF a little bit clearer, okay? So 3 times 3 is 9. I still have this 5x plus 2 squared and this 3x minus one, uh, minus 1 squared. So here all I did was multiply the 3 times 3, bring it to the front, and then these are still being multiplied. I didn't do a GCF yet. Minus. I have a 2 times 5, which is 10. 
that gets multiplied by 3x minus 1 to the third and 5x plus 2 to the first. So I didn't do a GCF here either. I just did the 2 times 5, brought it to the front, but I still have this 3x minus 1 to the third and this 5x plus 2 all over the bottom squared and I have a 5x plus 2 squared squared to the fourth. Okay, and now hopefully it's a little bit easier to see a GCF here in the numerator because I need to simplify this. Okay, again I leave the denominator factor because later on something might simplify. GCF, 9 and 10 don't have any common factor, so I'm going to go into these binomials. Both of them have a 5x plus 2. This one has two of them, this one has one of them, so I can only take out one of them because they only have one in common. They both have a 3x minus 1 in common. This one has two, this one has three of them, so I can only take out two of them. So now I took out my GCF. What's left from here? Well, I still have that 9. I took out one of these 5x plus 2, and I had two of them to begin with. So I need another one of them. I took out two of these 3x minus 1s. I only had two to begin with. So this guy is done. Minus. I have a 10 left. I took out two of these 3x minus 1s. This one had three of them. So I need another one of those. And then I took out one of these 5x plus 2s. And it only had one. So that's what's left when I take out a GCF all over 5x plus 2 to the fourth. Okay, so again, I took out 5x plus 2 to the first, so I had a 9 left here and one of them left here. Took out two of these, so I have none of those left in my first term. Minus, I had a 10 left and had one of these 3x minus 1s left. Okay, because I took out um, two of them. I had three to start with. I took out one of these 5x plus 2s. I only had one to begin with, so this is all that's left. Clean up. I'm going to leave these guys in the front for now. 5x plus 2 times 3x minus 1 squared. And in here, I have a little work to do. I have to distribute, distribute, and then combine like terms. 45x plus 18 minus 30x plus 10. Right? That negative distributes all over. I'm going to cheat to say that is repeated. And last but not least, 5x plus 2 times 3x minus 1 squared and 45x minus 30x is 15x plus 18 plus 10 plus 28 all over 5x plus 2 to the fourth. Am I done? <laughs> no. Why? You see how I have a product of three um, expressions? And one of these is a 5x plus 2. I have four of them on the bottom. One of them will cancel. Now I can simplify this expression. This guy's gone, and now I'm left with only three on the bottom. So I have a 3x minus 1 squared on top, a 15x plus 28, and on the bottom, a 5x plus 2 to the third. Okay, anything else? I might look for maybe a factor here that I could take out, but other than that, I'm not going to square this, I'm not going to cube this, because this is the more clean form of this expression, and here is my first derivative. <laughs> okay, so this was a good fun example, right? Let me just recap. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. I had two chain rules all over the bottom squared. So that was my quotient rule. What I did was I multiplied this 3 and 3 just to kind of clean it up so I can identify the GCF easier. My GCF greatest common factor. Both of these have a 5x plus 2, but I can only take out one of them. Both of these have a 3x minus 1, but I can only take out two of them. What's left, right? Simplify, simplify. I have similar terms on the top and on the bottom. And then I simplify completely for my last final case. So again, if this is not enough, if you need more examples, you guys have to let me know. Okay, comments, subscribe. Um, 
every Friday I'm posting, so give me comments, subscribe, let me know, put that little bell, um, click on that bell so that you um, you can get a, a hint when, um, when I'm posting that video, when it goes up, and um, anything you guys need, let me know so I can put it on and help you, all right? Till next time.